Hi, Susan here, and today I wanted to show you how to make some of these caned beads. They're very simple, and these are some that I've just made and I've glazed, and these, this is one that I used in that previous necklace, my water tree necklace. Now, to start this, they're very simple. I'm working with a stack of three colors, and I basically cut a V into the three colors, and I've, just because it's boring to watch, I've made different stacks. Now, you've seen me do this in my flower cane tutorial. You could just use one of these stacks and make one cane. Here's some previous stacks that I've made using three colors. Let me flip that around. These three colors. And you see that I got three completely different canes. So if you want to build your bead stash quick, the easy way to do it is do all three. Otherwise, you could just do one. I'm going to do the three just to show you the different colors and how they blend today and how you get more purple, more blue, and more green. And let's see how this goes. So I'm going to fold these over and run them through the pasta machine about 15 times, and that's going to give us a nice Skinner blend. So I'll do that and come back. Okay, so after we've run these through the pasta machine, it was approximately 10, 15 times that it takes. I'm now going to fold them over onto themselves, and I'm going to run this through the pasta machine long ways. So it's going to go in the pasta machine this way and come out that way. And I'm going to do it on a number one and a number three. And as you can see, there's very different gradient colors that you get out of the same stash. Okay, so we've rolled this through the pasta machine on number one and a number three, and now it's kind of a long ribbon. A um, little tight on the screen, just because I like to do really close-up work. So you can see everything I do as it gets smaller. So we're basically just going to roll the clay onto itself. And the biggest decision is to decide which color you want in the middle and which color you want on the outside. Since I've already rolled these other two canes, you didn't need to see that twice, um, I'm deciding to put the green on the middle since I don't have anything with the green. And now I'm just going to give that a little push together. I'm trying to work some of the air out. And I kind of use the table as my tool. I just like to press this down. This has a big air pocket in it. Normally I would fill that with some clay, but because we are going to be compressing this cane into itself, that's going to work itself out. So now I like to outline these color these canes with some clay and I'm thinking of using some opposite colors. Let me just roll these out on the pasta machine. I need these on a number 3. Okay, so I've already lined these two with a different color, and I'm going to line this one with the yellow. Basically, I've got this cut out on a number one on the pasta machine, and I'm just going to line it, and this is going to give us our contrasting color, as you can see in this cane. Let me see if I get it closer. There we go. You see that that white really sets everything off. Well, that's what I'm trying to do with a contrasting color. And I really like sometimes these brighter colors because it all seems to go together. Whatever colors you work with, you will find your bead stash starts to all work together. You end up using your favorite color blends and it just you'll find that you buy beads that match in those color blends. It's kind of cool. So now I'm just going to reduce this and we're going to make that basket weave type of a thing with it. When I reduce the other canes, I will come back and show you the beads that I make with them. So you can see the results by using the same three colors and the different variety you get. Because to me it's all about building the bead stash. And I'm just basically squeezing and squeezing this cane up and down as I do normally. I may even speed up the video here because it gets quite boring.
Okay, we're trying to make this about 12 inches long once I cut the ends off because they're kind of useless cane, but you know, keep those ends, they're precious. And so I've got a 12 inch cane, so I'm going to cut it, let's move it in the middle, at about six inches. And then I'm going to cut it at three inches. What we're looking for is four pieces. So then we will cut this in half again. And I'm just gonna eyeball this up. Okay, now I need to squish this down flat. And let me show you how that looks. So it's just a flattened piece. And what I'm going to do is take these flattened pieces and stack them on top of each other. It's really a really simple cane. You could do this with a bullseye cane too. It'll just be a little bit more defined, but it still comes out really pretty. You don't have to do the Skinner blend. Maybe in the end I'll show a cane. Actually, that would be a good idea. I'll show you a cane that I make with the bullseye and the difference it's just a little more subtle with the Skinner blend and from here on in you can't roll it you've really just got to press it so that you keep the integrity of the shape okay and we're gonna cut this in half now and stack it on itself one more time and I'm a little short there so let me stretch this guy there we go And we're compressing that down to a square. Now this is why I work in approximately a four and a half inch square is because if you get any larger it gets a little tricky reducing this. You need to work out at the gym to get the muscles. <laughs> I find the smaller amounts of clay are just easier to reduce and easier to give your bead stash a lot of different beads versus making a lot of the same bead. Okay, and we need to make this split up into four parts, so we're just going to continue reducing until we get to about eight inches. That seems to be a comfortable spot. Let's see where we're at. Mm, we're pretty close. But I have to cut this piece off because, let's see, this piece doesn't match up and that's not going to help us in our cane. So yes, you can see they're all perfect. And but we don't have any spots that doesn't match. Nope, we're good there. So we're, we can pretty much stretch this. Let me see if I can get it in the camera this way. We can stretch this to eight inches and then we're just gonna cut it on the two inch mark. And now basically we're gonna make that basket weave. which is just basically switching it up in a different direction on each corner. And now because of my serious addiction <laughs> that I discuss, <laughs> I have to put a little gold leaf on this cane. It just doesn't feel right without it. So let me get my gold leaf out. And 
The beauty of the polymer clay is that the gold leaf just sticks to it like magic. You don't have to do anything, it just grabs it. And I love the way the gold leaf leaves like the little crackles in the beads of, of highlight. Let me point that out to you in some of my beads here. You can see the little crackles of gold leaf in there on the darker one, silver leaf on the blue. So it, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but it actually really just brings the whole cane to another level. And so we're just going to continue to reduce. And I reduced to about, let's see, that's about three quarters of an inch is the size of that cane. It just is an easy size to work with when you're coating a bead. Okay, so I've just got some scrap clay, and in order to make our beads, I'm just using bead filler, which is the canes that just don't work out, the colors you just don't like, things that were a mess, we all have some scrap clay. And this is a half inch cutter, you could use a three quarter inch cutter. You could cut squares um, out of clay if you don't have a cutter. Anything that will give you a consistent size is what you're looking for, and so you want to roll these into balls. I go for smaller beads just because I'm a seed beater at heart and I really like the way the seed beads look with the smaller beads. But do whatever size makes you happy. Now I've reduced this quite a bit and I may want to take it down a bit more. That yellow is quite bright. But you can see the yellow almost looks green now. So it's changed it up a lot. And to cover our clay, we are just going to make the thinnest slices possible. And if they're not consistent, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up. When you get your seed beads and your crystals and everything else, they'll be gorgeous. And so I'm basically, let me see if I get closer to the camera. I'm just covering the speed with the clay. Now you can see where can't fit a whole piece of cane in there, but I can zigzag it in because the clay bends. And there's just that little spot that it's not fitting. Well, the clay will stretch right up. Just push it. And now I'm just going to use the table to roll my bead on. If you do this all on your hand, it does have a tendency to distort, and then I just take it for the last second and make sure I have a nice ball. Now, I like you can do all round beads if you like. I, for some reason, like this little flattened bead. I like the shape of that. Um, and I just skewer through it. Oops, wrong side. But let me bring it up close to the camera so you really can see how pretty that bead is. And see that gold leaf, how it really shows up? Even with the camera, you can see it. almost want to get closer there. close as I can okay so just another way I wanted to show you how you could make this this is just a basic bullseye cane so no Skinner blends I've just started with a purple a blue two greens and a gold and I'm going to show you how this reduces down very similar so um, I'll come back after I get it reduced.
Okay, before I reduce this any smaller, I wanted you to see how you have a little bit stronger of a color variation versus making the um, blended cane. But it's still quite beautiful and it's very simple to make. And now I'm going to reduce it smaller, of course, edge it with some gold leaf because that's my thing. And I'll come back and show you some beads I've made with it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick comparison of the um, Skinner Blend versus the Bullseye Blend. This cane is the Skinner Blend and it came out like this. This cane is the Bullseye Blend, which is basically a solid color in the middle and then just rolling out on number one and covering that solid with different colors. So basic it feels silly to even explain it. And then I just reduced it the same as this other cane and you see how similar they are. So there's two ways to get the same effect, just your choice of which one you'd rather do. Okay, so I finished doing the beads with the bullseye cane and these are the beads that I did with the Skinner Blend cane. And you can see they're really similar. So if you don't like making Skinner Blends, you really could do it with a bullseye. Um, if I get closer up, maybe you can see the real difference is that this is a little softer, this one big, the Skinner Blend, and this one I haven't glazed yet so it actually photographs better. But this is the bullseye blend. It's just slightly slightly more dramatic. Uh, I think if you used softer color blends you could probably get it pretty close to this but either way it's a really nice technique and you can do it in any color. I do find that the similar colors as they reduce start to get too close together that you can't tell a whole lot so using more contrasting colors is a little more successful. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you give it a shot and follow me along as I bead some of these up so you can see what to do with these silly donuts because they're really fun. And I hope you had a good day and have fun building your bead stash.